Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Red World Fanfork. I'm your host, Mr. Elizabeth II, absolute monarchy lover, but the royal Spanish family accepts. The Spanish royal family's officially endorsed engagement and subsequent marriage of Lady Davina Lewis and her boyfriend Philip, or Philippe, the heir presumptive to the Spanish throne. This bond will secure a threatening alliance between two strong nations, and finally, the issue of religion can be pushed aside to share unbreakable monarchist European order. And they join our faction, which is El Great Great Greto. Uh, where does this, this, this? Take this, these two off because we don't need them over there. You guys do this as well. Take, uh, go, go, off, off, repair. Because now that they're with us, it's just so much easier now. And we'll have some allies up us out over here, which would be great. Um, you send down tank, tanks as well if you really want to. Uh, maybe not right there. Of course, this is this part, I guess, of Iberia is kind of mountainous and hilly. We'll give us some time to do all this sort of stuff as we're doing minor economic reforms because we get slightly more drift to monarchism compared to everything else. But you get 20% more infrastructure construction speed, and while we're not building infrastructure right now, we're building military and civilian factories. It'll come handy later. So, and we're also out of rubber, which is normal, and some chromium too, which sucks. But you know, c'est la vie. It is what it is. As we were trying to, like I said earlier, or maybe in the last episode, we have a heavy ship battleship hold just in case. Uh, carrier hull would be nice. Um, go with one actually there, and then a light cruiser, because why not? And another, ooh, nice truck, you know, awesome. We'll try to alien invade, we'll do the best we can, you know, no guarantees for everything that, for being successful and whatnot. Oh, they're already down here, nice. Uh, anything over here? Ooh, oh, he's a logistics wizard, I didn't realize that. Not an organizer, but at least a logistics wizard. So, can we go? I believe so. Strength and unions? Not in our Iberia. Also, what you all need. Um, some more, oh. There you go. And then you should be able to go. Right? Right. Oh, hello. Um, the Ethiopian famine ends. Well, that's nice for them. Uh, you can take this off as well. You have a little bit more strength over there. Uh, do we need planes? We can send planes over here too. Oh, we got Cass. Oh, I love it. We did that. What help us in even bid? Or we just call them in. I'm glad we could just call them in. I'm not going to give Viberia anything here, but you know we're going to take it all for ourselves because that's how we roll here. That's just how we roll. Empress of India. We could. Demand Somalia land. Uh, we did these two last time. Or, you know, Canadians left our traders or left our left our empire long ago. I've forgotten the essentials of loyalty to the crown. It's going to imagine you like that one reap many benefits, but they're all armed to make sure of that. Demand Somalia land. We don't want all of Somalia, just the rightful region we once controlled, but those idiots in Mogadishu refuse, and we may have to take it all. So we'll see how we do. How are the tanks doing? Where are the tanks? Oh, right here. Yeah. Nice. Oh, hello. Ooh. Oh, we didn't lose anything. Awesome. Go, go, go. You have stuff? Oh, the Soviet Union's trying to get to war with a lot of the people there. That's not good for them, but whatever. Get some more extraction because the extraction be nice. I'm sure you guys went that direction, but whatever. Take more territory. Oh, you actually did invade. Look at that. Go figure. Squeeze them. Because huh, I like squeezing them. And because we're mean, we're just going to take everything they have. So. Nice. There you go. I love encircling the entire Portuguese army, or at least most of it. Thanks, Spain. You're doing great. We actually lost quite a few guys, but whatever. That'll be worth it in the end. Now they've lost way more. Yay! Thanks, Spain. Thanks for everything. Even though it looks like you probably deserve most of this stuff, but whatever. Thanks, guys. It's ours now, and we'll probably just keep going down and around and... I guess we demand Somalia land first. I wish these guys still own the colonies down here, but now it'll make it easier for us to get around here. Um, we're just gonna start hopping all the way through Africa. Forty days ain't bad, but you know, still. Um, so once again, I apologize to the uh, group here. You're not gonna get anything from us, so. Should probably build up the ports if we start suffering supply issues. Um, other than that, we can launch from here. Do we have anything around here? Maybe back in the Americas at all? I guess we do have our own faction, so that does help. The Imperial Alliance. Sorry, Spain, you're not getting anything out of this campaign. Oh, we're down here too. Oh, that should be really nice. You sent all the infantry down here. Hmm. How much of Africa do we want? All of it? Probably. 
So we'll probably start working our way towards all that Qatar. I don't think Spain has any other colonial possessions around here, so. Kinda sucks, but whatever. Yeah. So now if you guys come down through here. I think so, look at that. Somalia, Somalia Democratic Republic is accepted. Our general proposal is Somaliland of peace. For peace. Instead of opting for a bloody war between our two nations, the cooperative government decided to do the right thing. Now Somalia land has returned to its rightful owners to the glorious British Empire. Who cares about self-determination? British South Africa. Oh, we get them anyways here. At least South Africa. Since when can anyone in the region govern for themselves without the mass corruption and poverty? It's clear that only tragedies befall in South Africa in the time since they departed our rule. Their lands plagued by racism and endless strife. Her Majesty will put an end to that and bring the South Africans back under benevolent rule. British... Ooh, North Africa. What else we get anyways? Empress of India. The British Raj was once a prized possession. Now it's a mess of socialist dictatorships and endless poverty. Now they can see what lacks European rule. What lack of European rule does to the precious nations. The Pacific Empire. All former lands of the Empire in Oceania must be returned. Britannia will rule the waves as she rules the Pacific. Or rules, uh, you know, the other groups and stuff like that. Yeah. Nice. Let me take these guys too. That'd be pretty nice. So, Arabia. Okay. Palestine. Yeah. Rep uh, Republic of Iraq. Qatar. Jordan, United Arab States, Tanger. Nice, nice, nice. And just one more infantry division before we really edit the template. Um, supplies aren't gonna be super good here. Fourteen is okay. Um, I wouldn't mind some artillery on them too. Just beef them up a little bit more. It does lower our organization, which sucks. It gives you way more soft attack. Do we really need... F yeah, we should probably keep field hospitals on for now. Get some logistic companies. That'd be really good as well, because we're going to be in some really sucky places. So, And since we're here, we're going to do this as well. Three, two, one. Let's go. Let's see what we can do about this, if anything. How about that close air support? That should... Make us able to at least push out through here, maybe, or maybe not. You might just need the tanks to come here. 59, 54. Fuel refining is always good, too. Uh, we have military police, which is nice. Get some more engineers, perhaps. We're struggling. Struggling. Two more days. No, hold. Let our allies deal with it for now. They can force it out while we try to enable invade through here with the tanks. Which is probably a really god awful idea, but whatever. How uh, many more days we got? Oh, halfway done with that one. That's not bad. Can make it some more millies, too. Um, just trying to break into Africa sucks. Go ahead. Queen restores Empress Title. The Emperor Empress of India, Title, was used by the British monarchs during the British Raj and the Indian subcontinent from 1876 until 1848, after India has attained independence from the UK. For a transitional period, the British monarch was also king of the independent dominions of India and Pakistan. After the British East India Company deposed the Mughal Empire, Emperor, and after the British government dissolved the EIC in 1874, Queen Victoria was given the title Empress of India, followed by her successors with the Emperor Title, but since that regrettable transfer of power to the Indian people, Britain's monarch has no longer been given the opulent and grand title of Empress of, or Emperor or Empress. This Queen Elizabeth said must change, and that change came into effect midday yesterday when Her Majesty claimed herself Empress of India. Long live the Empress. As she should be. Um, instead of that one, because we'll go through a lot of this stuff as well. Canada, Elite Society, yeah, let's get that one. That one's just really good. It was a little more political power, but that's alright. So you guys, right there. And you guys immediately start attacking Tangiers. And you guys are going to force the attack, because you're not allowed to lose. Yep, you have nowhere to go to. And you guys are going to force the attack as well. Hold. Ah, I love it when it works. Surrounded and going to be destroyed. Nice. You guys. You know, screw it. You guys can all ban that area. Come back over here. Screw that towel. They can attack our tanks as much as they want. Hopefully they can't pierce us. Nope. Three. Two. One. Actually, why are we doing it like that? I 
Let's go. Now we should do okay here. Yep. Got a blitz, 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 blitz. Here was Dem Democratic Republic of Algeria. 40 days is not bad either. No extra ships yet. We'll probably make some good old subs later on. Um, and just work your way down here. Mak Mak Makash. Yeah, I'll circle down here too, but whatever. Keep them busy. Okay, now they're dead. All thanks to Spain and our own efforts. Go through here and do it like that. So a lot of this would just be a lot, probably a lot of time lapse and whatnot, because why not? And you gotta go here, there, 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 there. I was doing that too. So, um, is there anything else we really need to read? Probably not for right now. And we'll do a lot more of these focuses as we go on. As America's killing itself, huzzah! Defend the streets. Should we find our enemies pouring into our lands? We should defend every town, every house, and every street of their blood. We'll never surrender. Now we're in Italy, trying to do our best, struggling a little bit here and there, but it is what it is. We just pressure the Argentines, though. 
Argentines can claim the Falkland Islands as their own. They also revoked these claims as their own. British North Africa. Once Britain ruled the Mediterranean in a series of humiliations, they're all slipped from our grasp. In particular, the Egyptian government made Britain look weak and incapable of maintaining its empire. Time for payback. Hong Kong mistake. What was our idiotic government thinking when it simply gave away the beautiful city of Hong Kong? 13 colonies. The United States was the first domino of our empire to fall, the one to prove it possible. Well, the old U.S. of A. has been relegated to the du dust bin, uh, or dust heap of history. There yet remains a successor, few remain successor, claiming that mantle. We shall finally have a revenge. Of course, there's no getting over there. Uh, I guess out with the Protection Union. The British Isles Protection Union is an outdated institution established only to create the illusion that we were fighting against communism because we can't do powerful union because, well, we're not Ulster or Ireland. And by Scandinavia. Britain and Scandinavia have historically been tightly tied closely together. Although many of the ties were abandoned during the late 80s and early 90s, they could easily be rekindled. We should invite the Scandinavians of an agreeable disposition to our new alliance. Invite South Africa. South Africa has been, been an isolated country, but we've not forgotten our historic ties with South Africans. Let's break the isolation and reach out to the South Africans and hope they will take our hand once again. Invite Australia. Australia and Britain have always been tied closely together, and despite the dissolution of the Commonwealth, the two nations still are dear one to another. If all Australians would agree, we would be honored to stand side by side with them once more. Invite Morocco, even though they're dead, so you're going to do that, please go ahead. Iran. Well, Iran and Britain have had a sordid history. Fifty years have passed since the last bump on the road, hopefully. Time passed made the Iranians forgive us, so they would be willing to join in our alliance and be a strong bastion in the Middle East. Irish trade. More economic connections to Ireland should be established, even though we own them. Where the Emerald Isles are close by, it only makes sense to strengthen their trade relations so all can reap the benefits. Ben, uh, befriend Brazil. Brazil is the largest country in South America. If we could align them, we could gain a powerful ally. Let's arrange a meeting with the Romero Yuca and set up an amicable relation that will someday hopefully will blow them into something more or something. And trade with them. Brazil just got its host to immense, immense wealth of natural resources. If we could just get cheap access to those, both our economies would experience a tremendous amount of growth. But for Mexico, in the aftermath of the collapse of the U.S., Mexico grew to be one of the powerhouses of the North American continent. <clears throat> As the former U.S.'s future becomes more and more certain, when successors swallow them for power, Mexico could make a viable friend and trade with them. It's a highly populated country, and with the economic growth they've experienced over the last few decades, Mexico has become an ex excellent export market for British goods. We should strike up some mutually beneficial trade agreements with them, but for West Africa. It's one of the strongest countries in West Africa, or Africa in general, and despite their historic ties being closer to France and Britain, uh, to France than Britain, they may make us a good friend in the 20th century, yeah, 21st century. Extending them ahead might be all that's needed. Trade with them. It's a developing country, and thus yearning for capital with which to modernize and develop. Britain has exactly that, and we all need in exchange would be access to the plentiful natural resources. Free trade deals with the West African government is all that's needed to acquire those and land for a project. A great construction effort will be undertaken to ensure that every attempt, enemy attempt to uh, attempting to set foot on British soil will be beaten back across the channel by our superior defenses. So they are artillery. With severe power for hour and precision firing, we can hit our targets without endangering our boys. Weapons development. Defense contracts are already designed in the next weapon upgrades for arsenal. More reliable, powerful, and accurate guns will make our, sure we get a job done in every environment we would find ourselves in. Tanks. British tanks are notably inferior to the Canadian or German models, particularly in terms of reliability and speed, yet further improvement in tank design is needed to address these glaring issues. Training program. British soldiers shall be the finest in the world, drilled and taught on the newest tactics to be combat ready in an ever-changing world. The combination of ground, navy, and air power will strike fear on the enemies of Britain, defend the oceans. We are an island nation, surrounded by water on all sides. This water wall has proved an impregnable defense of the centuries, only crossed nearly a thousand years ago. If it's to resist the next one thousand years, the British Navy must be restored. Glorious Navy. Britannia was once ruled the waves, and if we were to do so again, we must have the new ships, modernizing our destroyers, will provide a keystone to naval defense both near and far. Modern vessels. No world class navies can complete without capital ships. The age of the battleship came to an end long ago, but that merely paved the way for a new kind of ship, the aircraft carrier. With the mighty fleet of these, Britain can project power anywhere in the world. Uh, old and new strategies. As your engineers and shipbuilders are hard at work restoring your navy, we must not forget the brains of our naval brawn. Let's give the Admiralty a call and invite them over for a meeting in Whitehall for a discussion about British naval strategy for the 21st century. Protect colonial establishments. Despite the loss of colonial territory during the latter half of the 20th century, the sun is not yet set on the British Empire. Outposts such as the Falkland Islands still yet remain under direct control from London. For the sun never set, we should make sure that our control remains unchallenging going forward and fortify them against an increasingly hostile world. Broad na dockyard construction. A world class navy needs world class dockyards to supply it with ships and repairs, and yet our dockyards have been allowed to deteriorate over the last couple of decades. We must embark on a grand program of dockyards expansions to ensure that the British Navy has what it needs to once more rule the waves, defend the skies. The 20th century proved that there's a third dimension of warfare the airspace. Today, even the mightiest armies and navies can be destroyed by air power. If we are to protect Britain from these foreign threats, we must remember that we shall rule the third dimension too. Legacy of the Battle of Britain. The Battle of Britain was the finest hours, as we, despite all odds, prove that the torch of freedom for Europe cannot be extinguished. We must learn from this victory and what it earned for us, supplying it once again for the 21st century. Modern bombers. Fighters will make a path of what an air force needs to do. With a modern fleet of bombers, Britain will be able to batter all their enemies into submission, just as Sir Arthur Harris did seven years ago. Anti air installations. All the seas surrounding Britain is no defense against an airborne assault. 
A brave British airmen, before we've kept our nation safe, they will need all the help they can get in the coming new war. We should install SAM sites across our country to give them all the aid they need and for their air defense. The more technology progresses, the more range aircraft will get. Not even distance from the European mainland keeps Scotland safe, and so they deserve protection from above as well, and British drones. Unmanned uh, vehicles pres present many present many opportunities for our airports. The ability to assault enemy positions and faculties or facilities without any risking any British lives is one we could really, really acquire. A new generation of unmanned aerial vehicles must be developed, and Britain must be on the forefront of this charge. Now, I ask you guys just whether we should do more welfare or less welfare. I'm going to read both, but you have to see if which one we choose. So, Her Majesty's economic advisor believes it would be best to increase welfare for the British people. She agrees. Thus, more funding shall be allocated to the public services to always remind people of Her Majesty's balance, grace, and generosity. Thus, welfare. Her Majesty's economic advisor believes it would be best to decrease welfare for the British people. She agrees. <laughs> After all, the many entitlement programs in Britain are such a drain on the national economy, it would be better to use elsewhere. Uh, power corporations versus the Queen's estates. We're willing to work with the various domestic and international corporations to strengthen the economy. After all, there's no need to discriminate against foreign businesses so long as they're willing to benefit Her Majesty's realm and the Queen's estate. We should not allow foreign businesses to interest to subvert the British economy and coordinate, subordinate it to their whims. This is the Queen's land. It will always be hers, and any outside interference will be met with the harshest rejection. And I did ask you guys yesterday which way we should go, but you'll have to wait and see. So if you don't read about these, please go ahead. Um, but some comments include, You should demand Cyprus and Somalia land, then launch invasions off of them. Also, go with more welfare because you need to make sure that people trust the monarchy. Someone says, um, The British people deserve a higher welfare status because... Uh, or values. Her Majesty cares about her people after all. Uh, someone else says, neat. Someone else says, I knew her death was fake. <clears throat> because if, if, if it wasn't, then how come she's fighting communists that don't exist? Someone else says, God save the Queen. And additionally, another person says, they changed a lot. So, yes they have. And someone else says, can you do Tiano Guangdong as Mortia? Once it releases, sorry, just reminding you again. If it bothers you, you can tell me. No, that's right, keep telling me that, because I'm going to forget. you got to pester me if you want me to do so. Royal Scotch Guards, and then, of course, for Scotland before we really just try to kill off the Papal States. Because they went to war with us, and they forced other people that they went to war with into our faction, which kind of sucks. But, oh well, time to reclaim Rome.
pretty much what I think we'll have for today. I guess we got an enabling invaded, huh? Um, we went to war with India just because I wanted to uh, get most of the Indian subcontinent under us, but then the Warsaw Pact was called in, and uh, I don't want to deal with them, I'll be honest. But unfortunately, even in this timeline, the Queen can't last forever, but... Hey, if you enjoyed the campaign, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. What the heck happened to America and the American People's Front? And I'll see you tomorrow on another campaign, like I said. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.